Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing Mathematics, A Very Short Introduction by Timothy Gowers. So this was a book in the A Very Short Introduction series. It's a series that I'm familiar with and they aim to give a reader a brief introduction to the topic that is mentioned. Under the umbrella of math, I have read A Very Short Introduction to Math History and Topology, a subject in math. So I am familiar with kind of how these math ones are set up and I listened to this book on the audiobook version, which I don't recommend for everyone. And actually, I don't recommend this book. You heard me right. I love math. I love mathematics. I did my degree in math. I read about math in my free time. I love the subject. And this book was a rare miss for me. So I'm going to be talking about why I dislike this book and all of the books that I would rather recommend or have you read if some of the topics covered in this book are of interest to you. So let's dive into why I didn't like this book and what topics were covered in this book. And most importantly, what I would recommend you read instead if any of these topics are interesting to you. First of all, I did listen to the audiobook format. And I don't recommend listening to this in the audiobook format. I think a lot of the visuals are important. I, however, was comfortable listening to the audiobook format, and that is because I was familiar with all of the topics that were covered. And this comes into play later in my review. So I already had familiarity with the topics that were being covered, and having sat through at this point in my life probably hundreds of hours of math lecture, I could visualize in my head quite easily what was being displayed in the book. So there was not a lot of difficulty for my, my brain to visualize visualize what was being explained, but I think it would be quite difficult for most readers unless like me you've had specialized math instruction or you have done quite a bit of reading in this field independently. So first off the bat I would recommend for anyone reading this book to get the paper version unless you're quite comfortable visualizing math when it is spoken out loud. So that is just a note on the format and I mentioned the, uh, the fact that I've had specialized math instruction, I have a math degree, I have read a lot in this field because I think this is what comes down, this is what the issue of this book comes down to. I don't know who this book is for because this book was so complex and dry and lacked the spark that if you are someone who uh, didn't take math beyond high school or really didn't have an interest in math but as an adult are trying to rekindle an interest in this field, if you don't have that baseline, this book does not start off at a basic enough level. It dives way too deep into topics without providing sufficient background and it does so in the world's most dry boring manner and again this is coming from someone who loves math I love math and yet I found myself bored by these topics that I normally enjoy so for someone who already doesn't have a baseline of interest in math it's going to be way too dull to hold your attention at least in my opinion however on the flip side of things if you are like me and you have some background in math there are much better books to cover any of the topics in this and and the brief introduction was still quite dull and boring and everything was so simplistic for someone who has familiarity without providing anything new or interesting or written in an engaging manner that if you have the background necessary to read the book it's not an enjoyable read anyways so i feel like this book is kind of in this valley where it's not really accessible or enjoyable to anyone so i'm not entirely sure who the author wrote or intended this book for but i don't know if it found its target audience so I really didn't like this book. I think it was a very poor introduction to the field of math. I feel like anyone who read this book would not find the field of math to be engaging. Having read this book, they would think it's quite dull and boring. And even as someone who loves math, I think that I would find the, I found the field quite dull and boring despite loving the field myself. So now that we've covered kind of what I didn't like about the book, I'm going to go through the, the chapters. I have the chapters written out and I have books that I would recommend. And these books are books that I have read in the last couple years and they are all reviewed on my channel. I have a whole math playlist you can search and find what these books are and read more about them to find a book that better suits what you want to read about. So we're going to start with chapter one where the author starts by talking about models. I think this is an interesting start because the author was trying to talk about maybe how we model the world with math, but I think we got off on the wrong foot. It immediately became too complex for someone who doesn't have a natural interest in math or natural background or any sort of background in math or natural aptitude for math. However, it was not intriguing enough to hold my attention. 
So instead, I would recommend starting, if you want to start very beginning, start with 30 Second Math. That is a book that really describes core concepts. I mean, starting very, very basic in 30 seconds or less. Fantastic. Love it. Book review on my channel. You can also try Pluses and Minuses, which is a book that explains how math is used to solve world problems. So that's kind of the modeling or using math to describe the world around us. Or if you are a little bit more comfortable with math or you want to challenge yourself, you can start with Surreal Numbers, which is a book that describes how the math system is built up. Chapter two, the author dives into numbers and abstraction. I think this would be a good start, except the author did not make it level appropriate. Again, it falls in this weird space where it wasn't appropriate for complete beginners or novices, but was too dull for the person who already has a background and was not written. I want to be clear when I say too dull, I don't just mean, oh, I understand it, so I don't need to read about it. I meant that it, for someone who understands it, it just came off as very repetitive and boring. It didn't have that spark because I've read many books that include topics that I've already been completely familiar with that still managed to reinvigorate my joy of this topic. And this book did not do that. Chapter two, numbers and abstraction. Again, I would recommend 30 second numbers, um, which is similar to 30 second maths, but it's just on like numbers and number properties. Surreal numbers, again, another great one. It's the building of the math system, uh, specifically focused on like set theory. And if surreal numbers, if you watch my review and think it's a little too complex, I would also recommend the big bang of numbers, which in my head is basically surreal numbers, but a little bit more basic. Or you could also read It's a Number Full World, which is just a fun introduction to math. Chapter three. Chapter three was about proof and writing proofs, which is a really important and key concept in math, but I feel it can be very daunting. And the authors of this book took no um, or made no attempt to make this an approach or bowl topic whatsoever. So I think this was a very, very poorly done chapter. It, they needed to start way simpler to get that basic um, introduction and I found myself all sorts of twisted around and did not enjoy the chapter on proofs. Now I've done my fair share of proof writing and I actually have a book to recommend called Proof, Explanation, Examples, and Solutions. I don't know if I would consider this fun reading but this is a fantastic resource if you are currently studying math. The review is on my channel of that one and it is the book that made that explained Proof by Induction in a way that no other math textbook or YouTube video that I personally have found did it is a resource I wish I had when I was doing my math degree and explains proofs much better than this book. Chapter four discusses limits and infinity. This is where in my head it could have gotten interesting. It did not. Instead, I would recommend reading The Secret Lives of Numbers just for one section in there, which discusses other groups throughout history that have kind of had a, um, a hand in uh, discovering or doing some thinking around infinity, particularly Jainism in India. But I would also recommend a graphic guide. So something that's a little bit more fun and easy to read called Introducing Infinity. Super fun. It introduces this very complex subject in a way that's accessible and much more enjoyable than this book. I'm really hating on this book, which is rare. Chapter five is about dimension. Really, they took this opportunity to discuss fractals and absolutely butchered it because they didn't make it exciting at all. So I have some other better recommendations for you. You can read Fractals, a graphic guide, tons of illustrations, Fractals on the Edge of Chaos. Again, a fantastic book. And if you really want to get into some weird stuff, check out Mathematical Impressions by um, A.T. Fomenko which was a, who or who is, I think he still is living, uh, a Soviet mathematician, now Russian mathematician, who did a lot of art illustration and they're just kind of weird and twisty. I'm not sure if it entirely fits in the dimension section, but it's a much more enjoyable book than this, than this mathematical, a very short introduction. Just return it. Chapter six is geometry. At this point, I was almost going to DNF the book, but I had a glimmer of hope because we were going to discuss non-Euclidean geometry. And... Unfortunately, they made this very fascinating topic boring, so good on them. I shouldn't have had hope. So I had a glimmer of hope, but unfortunately, they made non-Euclidean -ge non geometry and Euclidean geometry incredibly boring. I recommend instead checking out Flatland, a romance of many dimensions. This is about a two-dimensional creature living in a two-dimensional world who gets elevated to the three-dimensional plane and it's mind-bending. I think this could also maybe go with the dimension chapter. Anyways, it's a fantastic read. It's a classic. It's from the 1800s. Um, I think it was written, he was like a preacher or a school teacher. Um, in his time, he was better known for other works, but this is the one that has really stood the test of time. And despite being over 100 years old, very accessible, very readable. 
Next, if you want to push yourself on, ge on geometry, I would recommend checking out Euler's gem, which is about topology. Topology is a field that most students, if you stop in high school, or even if you take some classes in college, but not math focused classes, will never encounter. Topology is what we might call like rubber sheet geometry. So you can bend, um, bend the object and it's considered the same shape as long as you don't cut or deform it. It is absolutely fascinating. Euler's gem is, it's a little bit more difficult, but the author starts Euler's gem by saying, if you have a high school math background you just, and you are motivated to learn, you can read that book. So Euler's gem, fantastic, best introduction to topology out there. Infinitely more interesting than um, anything that was in this book that I read. You can also read Love Triangle, which is about ge uh, geometry or uh, sorry, trigonometry, which was interesting, reviewed recently as well. Finally, chapter seven, estimates and approximations. We just ended on a dull note. At this point, I probably should have DNF, but I had 54 minutes left and I was stuck at work anyway. So I figured I might as well listen to it while driving around, running errands and finishing up some work at work. So I decided to finish it up. And at this point, I had no hope for the book. Instead, I would recommend Mathematical Illiteracy and Its Consequences, a very interesting, I guess, essay we could say. And The Secret Life, or sorry, The Secret Language of Maps, which is how we, which is a book discussing how we tell a story with data. So overall, I was really disappointed with myself for picking this book, but I don't think there's anything I could have done differently. So I actually have a very good sense of what I'm going to enjoy reading. I know what I like to read and I am a naturally very curious person. So I enjoy reading almost everything that is written in the nonfiction section. And I'm very good at like discerning whether or not a book is going to be a good fit. So I'm very surprised that one of my favorite topics, math and this book wound up not being a good fit. That That is just wild to me. And I'm very sad that I had to rate this book quite quite a bit lower. But if you did listen to this book review and you're able to get some suggestions for what you want to read next, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to talk to you about books and other things. And if you read this book and enjoyed it, please let me know as well. Let me know what you think the author did well. I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest.